The Nutrition and Aging Resource Center recognizes services are not one size fits all. Therefore, we celebrate the diversity of the older adult population by respecting the needs of those various life experiences. How would you briefly describe your project to someone unfamiliar with what you do? So I work for the NC Center for Health and Wellness that's based at UNC Asheville in North Carolina and we are a resource hub for the aging network uh, across the state. And so for this project we are partnering with one of the larger area agencies on aging in our state, the Piedmont Triad Regional Council, to pilot a program called BLEND. And BLEND stands for Better Living Through Education Nutrition for Individuals Living with Diabetes. Um, and that project is really focusing on bringing education and nutrition services together so that older adults in the PTRC's region who are living with diabetes, specifically rural regions, um, can improve their, their health outcomes. And we're doing this by working with a local meal provider to provide uh, medically tailored meals as well as connect with the evidence-based program, specifically the Diabetes Self-Management Education Support Program that PTRC um, already facilitates, as well as uh, health coaching. What is the why behind your project? The why behind our project is really twofold. One is to provide access to those nutrition and education services for the older adults in PTRC's region so that they can improve their health outcomes and continue to live full and happy lives in place. And then the other piece is really to facilitate health care, health payer investments um, in these services for uh, financial sustainability. What has worked well for your project? I think the things that have worked really well for this project have been to lean on those partnerships, the existing partnerships and the existing network in that particular region. Um, our main partnership on this on this project is the largest, one of the largest AAAs in the state, and they have um, a history working in the region with lots of partnerships um, with different community-based organizations. I think what has worked really well has been to lean on those partnerships, especially when there is a piece that uh, experiences a challenge and we have to pivot and look at other partnerships or assist in um, generating ideas for, and solutions for that particular challenge uh, through those collaborative networks. What are some challenges your project faced? I think some of our biggest challenges have been not knowing what the timetables are for our different partnerships. So some of them um, have had to restructure a little bit as well as um, change when things were open based on the pandemic and um, their pri how, what things that they've chosen to prioritize. Another challenge we've had was, is also recruitment, ongoing recruitment with participants. Um, there's a lot of uh, adults who still feel hesitant about doing things in person, and then there are some that feel hesitant about doing things in the virtual world. Um, I think providers are still understanding what the program is, still learning and seeing the value of referring their participants, their uh, clients to, these, to this project. How did you find appropriate partners slash partner organizations? When we were initially writing this grant, grant we really relied on the uh, network that PTRC, the AAA that we work with, had built up in that area to understand what partners were valuable uh, for this particular project. Um, and we've continued to look for partners that have um, strategic alignment with the goals of this project, whose their mission and their goals of what their organization does aligns well with what we're trying to accomplish with this project. Um, so we have continued to look for, we are open to and continue to look for new partnerships um, by attending regional meetings, task forces, coalitions. So we are working with our existing partners based on um, the uh, relationships that the AAA had cultivated before this grant as well as new partnership opportunities that arise uh, over the course of this grant. What funding sources have you utilized or will you utilize? We at the NC Center for Health and Wellness uh, are working with several different grants, some of them from ACL, uh, some from the CDC, and so uh, we are leveraging funding from all those grants to support the efforts of all of the grants. Um, we're also working with PTRC to ensure that their um, DSMES, Diabetes Self-Management Education Support Services, uh, are reimbursed through Medicare. 
and uh, we rely on our partners for in-kind time towards this grant, especially when it comes to attending meetings and promoting the project. Um, PTRC is also working currently now on establishing a contract with a local ACO uh, to eventually provide some funding to support these kinds of services. How will this project be sustainable once your grant period is done? Continued funding for this grant will be provided through uh, Title 3C and 3D um, services. So those uh, are services that are already reimbursed through the Older Americans Act. Um, we also hope to have a contract secured for PTRC with this uh, ACO so that the coordinating piece of this project can continue to be funded, um, as well as looking for other opportunities to fund projects related to medically tailored meals specifically. What stakeholders do you need buy-in from? The stakeholders that we needed buy-in from uh, for this project were lo local healthcare entities, um, local ACOs, as well as senior centers, meal providers, um, federally qualified health centers in the region, and um, just other community-based organizations that were part of task forces or coalitions in the region. What advice do you have for trying to replicate a similar project? I think to have a similar project in the beginning, I would recommend to really think about your scale and scope of the efforts of the project and if it's valuable to scale down so that you can achieve uh, more quality outcomes over uh, more quantity, especially for an innovations project, something that's new. Uh, recognize that there are going to likely going to have to be shifts based on um, partnerships that may be added or that may change over the course of the project. Um, and to really focus at the beginning on establishing those firm commitments uh, for referrals, if that's what the project involves. How do I get started? When you're starting a project, it's important to make sure you understand your why. And I think that involves um, understanding what, the, what is already being done in the region, uh, what your partnerships are, and involving them in the process. Um, this includes doing a gap analysis in the region to understand what services are already available, um, which agencies are already linked, and where those gaps in uh, continuity of care are. I think that's really important to start a project, um, as well as making sure that you have the evaluation pieces um, solidified before you start actually doing services. What do you wish you would have known prior to beginning the project? It would have been helpful to know at the beginning of the project uh, realistic time frames for some of our partners in terms of the services that they provide. One challenge that we had was uh, with particular congregate meal sites not being open for uh, a, a very long length of time uh, and having to pivot when we realized that uh, their time frame was likely going to continue to be pushed back. I think something else that would have been helpful to know is uh, the work and flow process for medically tailored meals. Uh, this was not something that was in our initial writing of the, of the grant, but it is an opportunity that we had working with a local meal provider to begin to connect those adults, those older adults in our, that our project serves with medically tailored meals. And so I think we learned a lot about it in the process through um, working with that meal provider as well as other agencies uh, and coalitions like the Food as Medicine Coalition that gave us support. But this is all information that we gathered as we were, we were building the ship as we were sailing it. 